season three. Welcome everybody, energy. Yes, yes, energy. yes, 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 season three. Remember when I said this wasn't going to be an annual thing? Yeah. And here I am for the third year in a row as an annual thing. I need to do more of these lads. It's lovely. Sweet. Yeah. Welcome though, boys, welcome. Good to have you. Thank Thanks you so very much for having me. Sorry, so on my left, I have Cormac. Hello. Duvall. And on my right, I have Michael Dowd. Boys, how are you? How are you? Welcome. Uh, very good indeed. Uh, just got over COVID. Uh, completely clear, don't worry, I'm not infecting anyone. And, okay, uh, I was just going to say, I was going to be nervous. No, 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 grand, no, grand, no, grand. So, um, and Cormac, how are you, bro? Bro, I am flying it. Yeah, good to good to be here. Good to be in Cork for a little while now, like, and before we start back then again for a third semester mm. in over in London. Yeah, so, good, Lovely bro. job. Well, boys, it's good to have you here. First season back, or first episode back of the season. Uh, again, I say I need to do more of these because I get so many inklings at night time when I want to have this guy on, that guy on. I'm glad I have two, two of you guys on. I'm glad I have another two people on. The next one, they're brilliant. And the third episode is going to be another brilliant one. Boys, before I start this, though, let me reach for this before I don't protect my voice. Good, good, good reach. Sullivan's Brewing Company. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring us this for this season. It's a craft beer company based in Kilkenny, American Irish owned. Make sure I get that in shot. That's what they want. Lovely. Can I see everything here? You can't drink yeah, it now. It's it out of date. It's beautiful. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, I don't drink anyway. I'm sure it would still <laughs> taste good out of date, yeah. I wouldn't doubt I'll be doning them after. If I worry. did drink, though. There you go. So, boys, thanks a million for the sponsorship, guys. Uh, Sullivan's, I'll put a link somewhere in the um, description in the podcast, uh, the Instagram page, if you guys have to look at the website. Um, so that's out of the way. Thanks, guys. So first of all, boys, the first thing I wanted to say, kind of bring up, is Cormac, you've been in London. Cork, you've been, or Mike, you've been in Cork for most of the time. So I kind of want to start it with the whole Originally London from Kerry, though. Originally from Kerry, yeah. Oh, really? And you tell, I'd say you tell people every every time that you're from Cork or from Kerry, yeah. though. Don't forget that. Um, Make it seem like I've travelled a bit. Yeah, yeah, true. So how's the, uh, <laughs> how's the Cork scene treating you? Uh, well, I've been here with about sh- over 10 years now, so... Uh, it's Doing pretty well. Like uh, I, I, to be honest, like I've done most of my film and theatre. Well, I've done all my film and theatre work in Cork. To be honest, like uh, mm. because I studied in St John Central College from two thousand six to two thousand and eight. Uh, went back to Tralee, really worked in retail for a while, uh, then came back again and slowly got back into it and everything. Uh, did some plays, uh, did some shorts, and uh, stuff. yeah, still at it uh, to this day. Yeah, because Cork is quite good for that. I think even if you're just starting off, it's a brilliant start. It's a brilliant. Uh, it's a brilliant base to build your career, especially to Theodore, Theodore film. Me and Cormac yeah. can tell you all about that because we started from the, well, I say started from the bottom, like we've made it anywhere. I but, know, hey, made it to a studio. I mean, yeah, in fairness, I just think it's a great way to, especially the beginning, and Sean will tell you the same thing about connections and just base level, just script writing, getting into it. I think Cork is always brilliant for that. So as you say, yeah, I mean, acting Cork for 10 years, you wouldn't miss a beat because there's so much there. Oh, and you're, as well as that, like, you're meeting new and new people, like, you know, it's oh, becoming usually. bigger and bigger, and you're making new connections, mm-hmm. like, uh, and it's great, there's fresh blood coming in, as well, like, you're always going to have fresh blood coming in, but, like, you know, it's always oh, yeah, a good yeah. thing, you know? Mm, it's great, so, um, yeah, I wouldn't have put past Cork at all, but uh, you've left Cork recently. I have, I have. Because you don't like it. Uh, doesn't like us. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm very conscious. I don't want to come on here and be like, oh, yes, you know, I'm studying in London and I would never go near Cork anymore. That's definitely how you talk over yeah, there. Yeah, I know it He's is. He's putting actually, this on yeah. over since he flew over, though. I know. You know what the most frustrating thing about moving abroad is? So, like, you go into a shop and stuff and be like, oh, yeah, hi, lads. Um, Can I get, say, right, we're going on a night out. I'd be like, oh, can I get a nag and a vodka? And they're like, what? Huh? Oh, huh? Do you really? You, they, you say nagging over there, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, they don't know what, what that is. Do you think there'd be enough of us over there that they know what a nagging is? I like, know, yeah. yeah. But as well, like, people can't understand me. That's a mad one I find sometimes. Really? I'm like, and as well, there's no excuse for it. We're actors. I'm like, I should be able to be understood. You've yeah. got a yeah. pretty neutral accent. I was just well, saying, like, you, you know? speak quite clearly too, yeah. So yeah, not it's understand not bad. It's not. But I suppose as well, one of the big things about moving over there is I've had to, like, assimilate to slowing down. Like, you know, the old Cork stuff. Jeez, lads, we talk as quick as we can, like. Oh, man, I was over there two weeks ago and I remember just as you said yeah you meet a lot of Irish people over there I did hear a couple of Irish accents but I did find myself speaking quite like this to talk to people yeah and just out of natural because I know if I spoke the way I did over here they wouldn't have a clue so yeah I understand that completely and you get into this weird thing as well where like this is what I found that I start almost stuttering as well because what I do is I'm thinking so far ahead and I'm slowing it right down and yeah. I know what I'm going to say you must be doing that a lot so far if you're surrounded by like theatre students over and where you're studying yeah if you're kind of like say doing a scene even if you uh, just have to naturally use your own voice you probably actually have to put on 
maybe something slower, as you say. Yeah, to be fair, I'm probably used to it now. I think the first year was a big, big shift, like, because, you know, as well, the stuff we're getting in, sure, it's a British drama school, it's in London, so a lot of the material mm-hmm. is, you know, obviously London-based. Um, It's quite diverse as well, like, as opposed to, not that the material isn't diverse here, but the stuff that I had done previously would be your more stereotypical stuff, the more McDonough's, maybe a little bit of John B. Key in the field, you know, yourself, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, like, so... um. Yeah, that's been a big shift, all right. Like, okay. But yeah. in terms of like the whole uh, process of studying over as a, as an actor in London, is it quite? I know obviously the lifestyle is pretty obvious, even when you move to London, the expenses and all that. Of course. Stuff. But is there much of an adaptation f- or a difference when you? Because obviously you were in school music for a bit. Yeah. How has that process been going from somewhere like Cork to London, and how different is it? Yeah, it's a great question. I think. To be fair now, school of music I loved because I had such freedom as well, you know. It was great because it allowed me a load of different hours off and I really had time to find myself. Mm-hmm. But um, with this, with London, it's professional out. Like, like we're in every day before 8am. If you don't sign in on time, you're out. You're barred. If you get three barrings, one term, you're kicked out of the course. So it's that professional like you. We have, we have that here too. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I was coming in the door as well <laughs> two minutes late and I was like, If oh, the lads were no, in before like, half nine, they weren't doing the show. I kick them out. All right, Jeff. See. Yeah, oh, there we are. I know we're getting the eyes now. Like, Jeez, yeah, that's pretty intense, yeah. Yeah, it's intense, all right. And then, like, to be fair, like, the time you'd finish, so you might have a class, so you'll have class maybe from eight to nine, it'll either be yoga or maybe a gym class. Then after that, then, you know, you'll have your acting technique. We might have intimacy or combat training. Um, We could have TV and film, physical theatre, different stuff. You know, accents, voice. Um, Apparently, we're not meant to use the word accents now. We have to use the word voice. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, yeah, apparently so. Weird. I know. I, I wish I could remember the reason, but we're meant to use voices I, anyway. Voice would be kind of length and kind of, um, you know, noise level rather than where they're from. Yeah, I don't know. There was, oh, it's global voice, I think you're meant to use instead of accent. Actually, actually just going back there, you said you do yoga. Yoga, yeah. Of, would that be part of like, uh, I suppose, like the, would that incorporate like breathing exercises Spot and on. everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's yoga in the morning. We probably have it about, and then this year now, since it's second year, we're kind of, becoming more independent where they give us maybe two mornings a week where it's self-led so I mean that kind of separates I suppose the men from the boys really in the sense where you got to do your work like I mean every actor you see will tell you to do the work oh yeah 100% yeah. Cause when I started in Actors Vision I remember just how paying paying more attention to small things like the warm ups and the techniques and that if you do want to become better or you do want to kind of work on your craft those small little things are very 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 important and I was quite new to the, the kind of what the word is the craft of acting because I even when I did the film a few years ago I hadn't studied anything so I was just curious as to see how it was going and or how you would get into it and I went to Actors Vision and small things they say the yoga we do warm up before classes and all that kind of stuff it is very very important I found especially throughout the course when I started to get more um, of an inkling of what I needed to work on and what I was good at you can work on both things just because you're good at something doesn't mean you can't work on it so small things like warm ups and stuff and as you say yoga is pretty that must be pretty, yeah, very it's, helpful. It's bloody helpful. It's sore, like, you know, yourself. I oh, yeah, yeah, imagine. You're, you're oh cold sweat. God. You wouldn't need to go to the gym. Yeah, I know. Another ways. It, it, geez, as well. Like, mm. you know, and it, you'd be looking at some people in class, like, and they're doing the position perfectly, and I'm there trying to get my head above my shoulder, like. Oh, yeah. I, I remember, guys, I just, I did one of this, I remember doing a warm-up where we had to be some for, whatever character we were doing, we were doing Shakespeare. Lovely. And it was someone from Othello, and we have to channel the character through whatever animal we see fit that represents the character. Sick. So everybody did it and after 10 minutes, Darren kept us going for a while. So an animal, maybe you're on your knees for a while, maybe you're crawling for quite a bit. It gets tiring. After like 25 minutes, I noticed every animal was like taking a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked, I, looked, I looked around the room and every animal was just like in the corner asleep. And I was like, oh, it's very convenient, isn't it? I think and me as sloth. well <laughs> asleep in the corner. I know, yeah. Uh, I just found that kind of funny because as you say, it is tiring as much as you need to be in the headspace of... A, animal in that situation yeah, it's tiring that, that, yeah, that as a technique has been around for it's a long time yeah. oh yeah yeah it's, it's Chekhov yeah. because uh, uh, an acting teacher of mine was telling me one time that uh, Marilyn Monroe based her walk on a polar bear lovely job so I'll just go 3, 2, 1 again mate. okay 3, 2, 1 <laughs> yeah. okay. 3, 2, 1 so Mike the Crucible how was that whole process of coming out of something? Because I think even in Cork, in terms of theatre, that was, again, Dave Rollins did a play in the talking about the last season where during COVID it was probably the first or the only one that was on in Cork at yeah. the time. I went to this, this was a full theatre. There was no distancing, there was no kind of, so it was nice to be in like a, an atmosphere like that again. So was that enjoyable to be a part of that process? Again? That was my first time performing in The Everyman. 
really. Yeah, yeah, it's it's such a completely different vibe to the car as well. Theater, like you know, yeah. be, because like when you're in the Cork Arts Theatre, and I love performing in the Cork Arts Theatre. I, I work in the Cork Arts Theatre, like you know, but I love performing there as well. But like. Uh, when you look out into the crowd in the Cork Arts, when you take a sneaky glimpse, like uh, you're going to see a few faces, like you know. Whereas in uh, in the Everman, you're looking out into the darkness, and it's like okay, it's you it's just you the and the scene <laughs> yeah. here, like you know, and you really have to kind of yeah yeah you need to give them a show. Yeah, because I um I thought that the stage, the production, everything looked brilliant. I yeah, thought the yeah, end yeah. Of the first oh, act they did an incredible was job. Like it was brilliant, and I think. Um, Obviously, you kind of put it off for years as well. Which is, did you have? Were you part of that production at the very beginning, or did you just I, I actually join wasn't. It? I was uh, brought in late because I, I think uh, one of the actors just couldn't commit, and uh, Darren got on to me and he was like, "Hey, do you want to play oh, yeah. this role?" Like, uh, Tim was on last season. He was only brought in maybe two, oh, three months Tim before. Is so much fun! Oh, yeah, I was oh, only he's great. I was only telling him like, Derek on Monday that you would be on the podcast today, and he was delighted. He could have said he'd really looking forward to hearing it. We we had the rap party a few weeks back, and it was a blast. Uh, I. I stayed up till half four, which I haven't done until for years. Like you know, just in terms of yeah, yeah, it's strange, out, yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like okay, I'll go for a nice meal in the market lane, like you know, delicious steak, like and everything. He's like, telling you know. me all the stories about going back to the studio and everything. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was so much fun all together. Yeah. yeah, well, I thought it was very good. And I was just saying to you, you and Tim were very good, and I thought there was a. Some very, very brilliant performances in there. Oh, they were a fine group altogether. Uh, yeah. that, that guy, uh, Dan Fitzgibbon, who played uh, Proctor. Proctor, like, he's he's unreal. Mm. And, like, th- there was points... And it's it, it's it's so funny because, like, uh, you know, the, the night of the rap party, Dan showed up, like, in a Hawaiian shirt and everything, like, you know, okay. just kind of, like, in complete party mode. Yeah, like, yeah. But, like, when we were actually, uh, you know, during halftime and everything, like, he's completely disappearing into his character like you know yeah. and everything like because he's such a tense Cause the, character and everything like but uh, no no he's an incredible performer I'd love to work with him again actually yeah because Tim yeah. was saying that there was uh, the scene but he's obviously playing a judge but there's another judge who played opposite him what was the actor's name this is awful I, I should, he I doesn't should, know I, 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 I don't, oh no I, I'm sorry I, if you're watching the, the, Judge I'm so sorry like uh, I oh my god Mr. Judge he's guy he's an unreal actor like uh, the, no the, the, the character's name is uh Danforth, yeah, and I, I, I'm so bad with names, like, and I should have ran. And it's so funny because I ran into him a few weeks ago, and I was like, "Hey, how you doing, man? What's the story, dude?" Like, you know, and I was with a group as well, and I think he was waiting for me to introduce to introduce him to the group. Like, I'm so sorry that I forgot your name, man, but like, I think you're an incredible actor. Like, and we we spent the whole night talking. Well. But you know, when you get to a point where it's like, well, I'm too embarrassed to ask. Oh, him, completely. Like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody has. I know, yeah. um, but the reason I mentioned his name is because there was a bit, Tim was saying he has a lot of scenes with him, and at the last night before they went on stage, he just grabbed Tim by the shoulder and he pointed at the stage. He said, "That's our courtroom." So he's so immersed in the character, he's grabbing Tim oh, and he's saying, "Okay, whatever you do, scenes together. whatever you do tonight, do not ever look past other than this is your courtroom and no one else's." And he walked on stage, and I tw- I saw it the first night. Of uh, he said that the second night he said he was happier his performance. I thought it was good anyway, yeah. but he said that the second night he said that scene, the last act was his favorite. I th- I think it was unanimous actually the the second uh because I think we there was a we're still shaking off a bit of rust I think on the first night yeah, and yeah, then yeah. like uh once the second night came it's like okay this is our last night you know we go out with a bang now like sorry right. if that was too loud Jason. Yeah too loud you get out. <laughs> no I think uh yeah I enjoyed it I thought it was quite good and obviously no I me going there knowing you had put two and a half years of work into it I'm kind of like you know this yeah. is you know you guys are well rehearsed at this point you guys well they, they put in two and a half years they deserve more credit actually in that regard like, oh they would do that yeah because yeah. I, I just they, came in like a chancer so <laughs> <laughs> yeah true You how long how long was it actually when you joined her I mean, until the play was oh, oh how long was I in there yeah, uh, yeah I had joined just before Christmas okay uh, no no I was lucky because like uh, most most of my scenes like you know Darren was like okay you need you, you need to be off this scene uh you need to be off book for this scene by next week and i was like oh how am i going to do this but like uh his scenes are relatively short his longest scene is the courtroom scene yeah i know and uh i was just kind of like okay i already halfway off book for that because i had to go and do that scene anyway for the audition mm. so let's see what else i can kind of do so i was able to kind of work it week by week and kind of slowly get off it like you know Great, yeah. so yeah it was i was off book uh you know, before Christmas in that regard, like so. Yeah, yeah. 
fairly easy. Well, I just thought it was very good, so I'd say well done. I was saying if anybody else from Mark who was in the play, I thought it was brilliant. Um, because obviously I know Darren as well. So oh uh, yeah, that's I was the thing. Obviously, I like say everyone involved. Like just yeah, I just talked to like, game. You know, the week uh, the week after I was talking to him in class, and he just he said that he was happy with it. So and I was telling him the same because a lot of my class went to see it too. And obviously in the crowd, you recognize a lot of people there too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was one thing I want to say about mentioned the Crucible. Obviously, you've got uh dog girl and stuff. We'll come to that, but. The Iftas came out. They did. They did. I said they came out. They they went through the process. It was, it was on TV and I uh, watched it. And you, Cormac, said to me, you kind of want to go down the route of the Irish language towards yeah. film or even involved. Because on Colleen Kuhn, I, I, when I'm being a member of Ifta, means you get to watch all of the nominations uh, before the voting is allowed. Oh, wow. And basically, yeah. I went into the feature film section. There was maybe 10, 15 films. Mm-hmm. On Colleen Kuhn was the first one. That that child actress was unbelievable. No way. And yeah. the language was amazing in it. And as you say, it got nominated for Best Picture. How you when you say you want to touch on Irish language film, do you mean just the process of maybe developing into it, or do you yeah. want to maybe talk about just how important it is anyway? Just how important it is, really. Like I suppose okay. we're all Irish people here, and um, you know, before we spoke English, we spoke <laughs> Irish. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's really important. <laughs> like what a medium that we have. Like uh, you know, I know we learned the Gwelga in school, and we learn on Vilcadigam Dulgadi and Leharis and all that. Like. But um, it extends so much further than that. Like I went to, to be honest with you, the reason why I think I'm like, I'm so proud to be Irish anyway. Like I'm not going by Cormac Wall anymore. I'm going by Cormac Duval. Keep the Irish name just to keep, I suppose, a bit of myself. Like that's who, yeah. who we were, you know. Mm. If I look at the walls through the generations, like to try and view it a little bit holistically, like I was Cormac Duval before I was ever Cormac Wall. But um, going back to it anyway, I think it's so important to look at things on TG Carr. You know, it's not all like, what was it again? What was the one on the leaving cert with your man, Brendan Gleeson played the guy and he was eating paste. Oh, don't Ca- uh, cock a millish. millish. That's it, cock a millish. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, like, you could watch that back anywhere. I'm sure it's on YouTube oh, somewhere yeah. if you looked at it. Yeah. I mean, there's a good piece to be fair. Like. Now, actually. Have you ever seen yeah. cock a millish, Have you not seen millish? No, no, I haven't oh, seen wow. Puccine either, which is like the first feature like Irish language film and it's like, that's that's apparently like a big one as well. Like, I think oh, they're trying do. to get that on the leaving. Well, the well, reason we have an attachment to cock millish is because like school and you have to do it. Paul. Stuff like you just whether you like it or not, it's with you for life. So I watch back that film, yeah, and I just get not nostalgic, but it's like I've seen this loads of times. But yeah, that those um, they are enjoyable films. Yeah, they're great. Like, but I think as well, like as good as those things are, like I suppose they were done. There's such an opportunity for new work to be done on Squega. I think particularly in a comedic field, really. Now maybe I'm being ignorant, but like a lot of the stuff I've seen in Irish has kind of been period pieces or maybe stuff about drugs or stuff, you know, about um, scandals in a small town, which is beautiful, brilliant art, and I'm not knocking it for a second. But um, I think there's a real opportunity there to do something different with the Guelga, three man the Guelga. And I think as well, it also, as much as it paves the language for it, it also paves the Irishness for it. Like, like they are the IFTAs, it's not the BAFTAs, it's not the Oscars or anything like that. It's the IFTAs for Ireland, you know? Mm. I think there's something so inherent to the Irish people with that language. Um, yeah, no, because I went to the Irish London Film Festival and I watched, um, what was it called? Is it Arok? What's Arok? Arok, yeah. Arok, that's it. Yeah, which was the one about the famine. And I swear, it's probably one of the most emotional experiences I've had because I was missing home anyway. And, you know, you're going to some cinema in London. You're surrounded by all these Irish voices. And I was sitting next to the lad who was in it and I was just bawling. Like, it was just all about the famine. And even the way just they used the silence and the language. And even then, like, you know, that period in time when there was English settlers were here and invaders and um, how, like, they flip between English and Irish in that movie. It's really powerful. Yeah, because I imagine if you're now from you're Ireland... after flipping then... the script on them. Yeah, literally, <laughs> like, yeah. If, you, if, you're in, if you're in London and you're hearing all these accents around you and obviously you miss home, that gives you more of an implication than to obviously spread those Irish kind of, of course. awareness of a language. Now, in London, it might be difficult to do, but I totally get what you mean with yeah. the whole missing from home and saying, okay, if you're surrounded by all these voices that you love, it gives you more of a, 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 an emotional relationship to making Irish films and you want to... Get more involved in it. I think I've done maybe a handful of stuff when I was very young. I oh, went well, to, like I went to an Irish school, so my Irish should be well, not anymore. It used to be quite good, but uh, I've done Irish films, and uh, it is it's difficult. But when you actually the last thing I filmed was probably last in twenty twenty. I did a film for uh, over in Elton Waterford. An Irish oh film. yeah, you were saying that. Um, and that was actually brushing up on the Irish language was difficult, but I enjoyed the difficulty of it because I knew that what I was doing was it was very home based. And it was very, I, I haven't brushed up my Irish in a while, so it was good to brush up on it as well as make a good film. Uh, but it's very challenging. 
but I love the Irish language. I love speaking it to the point where if you can speak it fluently, it sounds very nice. I'm envious of the both of you, by the way. Like, uh, actually, my niece went to an all Irish school yeah. as well, like when she did her leaving search in Irish. So it's like, okay, that's I'm very proud of her, like, but I'm a bit ashamed of myself, like, you know. I know, I think yeah, it's something. Yeah. To be oh, fair. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I would love to, I would love to learn it myself someday. Like, it's actually know, something like, a lot of casting directors in Ireland do look for because it does show the. Uh, variants that you can if you do have a good language it means you can pick up another language no obviously yeah. it's different if you go to an Irish school when you're younger you're obviously going to pick it up a lot easier because you're just speaking it every day but um, yeah I think that uh, down the line I'm hoping that seeing something like on Colin Kuhn doing so well it's great yeah hopefully be more of an inkling for more uh, production companies and funding to go towards more Irish films and stuff like that so only good things ahead for if that it's actually great of being course. a member of it because uh, I got to see every single night. You know, you sometimes these nominations come out, you might see a handful of them, but you don't want to see all of them. Mm-hmm. It was great being able to actually get a list of features, documentaries, animated. Um, you know, although everything was there for me to watch. Now I didn't watch every every yeah, single one. Yeah, of course, it's impossible. I have to eat and sleep and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. But uh, it was great to have the option there and. Um, yeah, the ifs unfortunately wasn't in person, but uh, it was online. I watched it with Brendan. You guys didn't watch it, did you? Did you? I didn't watch it. No, who won? I don't even know who won. Well, to actually, be honest, which was, is terrible. It was funny because actually, before I say anything, it was my my dad bumped into Jesse Buckley's dad wow. two weeks ago, and she he was saying that how much she was more like she got nominated for loads of different things, but yeah, the ifs was, was quite yeah. special to her because just being obviously from home, and being that the aspect of it being Irish, it gives more of a feeling to it. Uh, because when you get nominated abroad, it's away from you. But here, it's more of kind of a, a warm feeling, knowing that someone in your own country is recognizing you for great work. It was for um, the Lost Daughter, obviously. Yeah. But um, yeah, when he he told me that completely out of random. He said, oh, "I met about Jesse Buckley's dad yesterday." I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, do you want to say that?" Sick. Yeah. I met John Joe down the road as well yesterday. How was your day? Yeah. Do you know what I mean like it was mad? Uh, because uh, his uh, her mother owns a hotel in Kerry. Oh wow! So, okay. Um, yeah, that was the reason. Why. She's, she's phenomenal, isn't she? Oh, amazing! Yeah. And you know what? I watched the Lost Daughter, and I yeah, have you seen all, the Lost Daughter? All the best actors are coming from Kerry, actually. Well, I, oh, there you go. <laughs> there you know. yeah. I wonder who's the next Kerry born actor who's going to be the best, <laughs> huh? Hmm? We because uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the Last Daughter. Have you? I haven't. Actually I saw seen it actually. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you know what? I think she's she was, she's incredible. She yeah, was yeah. fantastic in it, and I think I was I. I thought Paul. I was looking at Paul Mescal, okay, and the Irish attachment to it, and. Oliver Jackson Cohen, who'd done the whole thing of Blind Manor that was oh, out in Netflix yeah, a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah. At this cast was quite Olivia Coleman, obviously, then hits out the park. Yeah, the goat. But I don't know, man. Uh, Jesse Buckley was very good, but I thought the film was. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I suppose I was kind of commenting I did find myself on the, on the performances as, as, as a story overall. I don't think it quite came together. Yeah, it was quite in strange. the end. Like, you know, I, I, I got what. Uh, it, it, there's a very distinct style to it as well, and, and you're meant to feel very uncomfortable mm. when you're watching it. Like you know, and again, like you know, some of that can work. Do you know, like it? it it's, for certain people, it doesn't work. But I, I got what she was going for. Like you know, I said, yeah, yeah, I, I'm definitely feeling the emotion she's trying to evoke. But in terms of like coming away from it, going like you know, was I satisfied with this, with that story? I was like, mm. but like it's it's not a bad film. Like you know, oh, it's not a bad film. Yeah. I just I felt like it, it's so strange to see so many great performances and so many great actors in a story that at the film at the film I was kind of like, am I do I have to do I have to make my own way in my mind about how that ended? Yeah, because obviously it's Maggie Gyllenhaal's directorial debut. This is yeah. the first film's made, and to get it, all it those is nominations a strong is first incredible. Film in fairness, if yeah. you're going to make a strong film, that's one to go off. But I just found myself a bit let down. I don't know. I think I was just built up by the great cast and hearing all these great reviews. And it was in, I think, was it in Cannes Film Festival? I don't think it was. Yeah, uh, was no, it was. I'm fairly sure it was. Was it yeah. Can? Okay, yeah, because I think you're a fairly strong inkling if you get into Cannes and you get all this press and being Jake Gyllenhaal's sister, always a start point. Um, but yeah, no, I was just curious because I obviously. Jesse Buckley getting nominated was great, but I was curious. What do you thought? Have you seen? Je- you've seen? I haven't seen that. Haven't no, seen no. It's I, still on Netflix. I think. It should be cool, cool. I must check it yeah. out. Like I watched um something that sounds similar. I don't know if it is. Have you seen the Power of the Dog? That yes, was, I yeah. saw that. Yeah. 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 What did you think of that? Now, because I've heard loads of people say uh, a array of different things. That on got it. the did it get win the BAFTA for best picture. I think it did. Yeah, and he won the gold. Did he win the Golden Globe? Benedict. He won something Benedict, for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, class, yeah. Can't be in one best actor there for Oscar, by the way. I don't think you can hear Jay in the audio. Oh, okay. He just told us. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, Power I, of the Dog, what did you make I, of it? I, I thought the build-up was unreal. And then the yeah. actual payoff was like, oh, I kind of wanted a bit more there. Like, uh, I, I yeah. again, like, he, he's this really nasty character in it. And I really enjoyed watching him. Like, and I really seeing this sort of like... Uh, 
you're watching Cody Smith McPhee in it. Yeah, it was like, good. Okay, these two are going to be pitted against each other. Like you know, and I was waiting for some kind of show. And like I, I get that they, the, it was sort of like uh, it was on purpose that it was building up to a sort of anticlimax because it's like okay, just because you expect these two titans to kind, of, you, you, well, like you expect. Uh, sort of uh, this character to go up against this titan like you know you expect that it's going to be explosive towards the end like you know or mm-hmm. you know like uh, part of me was kind of expecting oh is it going to be like uh, Daniel Day-Lewis and Paul Dano in uh, There Will Be oh, Blood oh yeah yeah but uh, Paul Dano hasn't been the same since he made that film I'm convinced he's just been yeah, just I mean, like uh, he's, he's amazing but I think if he's uh, I think watching that film it's like he's um Every role he's taken is, but not similar. But I love the energy he gives off for a lot of his roles. Mm. I thought he was unreal in the Batman, to be honest. Oh man, it was yeah, a Riddler, it was, like, I thought yeah. it was a Riddler movie. Slightly I was saying this off. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Batman lost. Like he, that was not. That was not. I know it's he's new to Batman. He's quite new in his role, and he's quite. Uh, he's only becoming the Batman. He's not there. Uh, um, he's not in the suit that long. But yeah, I expected Batman. I, I'm actually quite glad in the way it was a Riddler film because I thought he was that Riddler character was brilliant. And I'm going off Jim Carrey's one then from Batman Forever, so <laughs> yeah. I'm just always gonna compare. But uh, you don't think you can when they're so different. I don't think Jim Carrey. He came out and he said he hasn't even watched the Batman because he just he knows how different hit that character is, so he doesn't want to kind of you know engage in it, which is strange because I thought he'd always be open to such different things. Yeah. Um, but he came out in an interview saying recently he's not too pushed to watch it, so maybe he likes his own Batman Forever Riddler his own way. Yeah. I'd um, actually love to see. Jim Carrey play a super villain again, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, do you know what? I watched Batman Forever before I watched The Batman recently. And uh, yeah, it was quite... A di- obviously, they're very different films, very, very different, different tones. Yeah. But I love both of them. Uh, more, more so probably Batman Forever, just being <laughs> just being the, the comic book nerd that I am. I love the, the, the film itself, but... Um, He's retiring from acting now, you know that, Jim Carrey. I've seen that, yeah. yeah. I, I don't think he will, to be honest. Well, I think he came out and he said what director he said wants to make a film. If he, if this director makes wants to make this film at this moment, at this time, oh, I might yeah. come out. Now, that could just be a joke. But I, yeah, I think a lot of people do these things for press. Yeah. Would Jim Carrey be press obsessed? I, I don't know, because he seems to speak the truth. Like, you watch him, I know he said some controversial things, but like you see him back in the day in about 2010, he's saying a lot of these things about Hollywood and about how evil it is. And everyone's like, oh, look at Jim Carrey. He's gone mad. He's gone crazy. Mm. And then slowly we're seeing this through the lens of 2022. Seems like he was speaking the truth the whole time. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I mean, yeah. yeah. To I'm be a honest, fan Hollywood's of always been a dodgy place. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's, of it's, it's, not, it's not exactly a new revelation. But yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I, I I do respect him a lot. Like, you know, in terms Even the of, I think he is a very unique voice in everything. Like, but... Uh, I hope he doesn't retire like you because I really yeah, like I love him. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, put, I think I would love to see him in something. Obviously, maybe not super villain, but maybe even like... So, uh, he's not going to do much different than what he's used to making because he's just True. one of those actors, but he's also very good at what he does. So yeah. I would love to see... If he retired, yeah, that would be a bit sickening. Yeah, it'd be sad, you, you know. know. he's Even our childhood, he's been in so many great films. You yeah, know, and so many just like things that you watch back from kind of early, late, early 2000s, late 90s. He would have been his prime like around Lyle. Adam Sandler time. Yeah, so, oh my God, Happy Gilmore, what a film. Yeah. That Adam Sandler film, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, actually one of my dad's favourite movies. Uh, go away. Really? Funnily enough, yeah. yeah. And my dad's big into, like, westerns, like, and stuff like that, and John Wayne and Clint Eastwood and everything, like, but uh, he's like, oh, I was watching Happy Gilmore again there tonight, like, you know, and everything. <laughs> I mean, it's a quite, yeah, most of his films, Adam Sandler, he's, like, a real working class guy, so it's kind of like, those films he made back then were quite simple stories, like... You know, um, Big Daddy was just raising a child. Is it Big Daddy? Yeah, that's Big Daddy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah, want to say yeah. the wrong name. That sounds a bit I, sauce. I, I, yeah, I know a little bit. I say Big no, Daddy. You ever seen that film? Big? No, I'm not even gonna say it again. <laughs> yeah. um, that film, and I then, kind of have loved that movie as well, to be honest. Yeah, it's so, but <laughs> it's the simplicity one, yeah. of him at the time that made him so great. Obviously, then Happy Gilmore is quite a simple thing to follow. Uh, the reason Grown Ups gets so much people love Grown Ups for some reason because it's so simple. Yeah, easy. I told story. my friend to watch it in work the other day. He hated it. Go because away. he'd be pure, like obsessed about okay, where's this character development? Where's that character development? Grown ups just an hour and a half of Chris Rock, Adam Sandler, those guys just making jokes, <laughs> yeah. and you can sit and watch your uh, kind of it's, it's be on your phone and have the videos and watch fun. it. Like, that's the Total thing, fun. Like, yeah. It's such simple filmmaking, and that's why people enjoy it. The mainstream love it. So back then, obviously comparing him and Jane Carrey, those guys stuck to what they knew. And that's why they were so successful. I think they didn't kind of okay. Well, you said I made that this very film. ominously. The mainstream like it. <laughs> yeah, the main like gate cinema. Oh, I'm gonna, this woman's going to bring three or four kids to see this movie. That True. kind of mainstream. This is, you can just sit down and enjoy it. Just you watch, watch what you want to yeah. watch. Like, you know, exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, of 
but when I say comp- I'm comparing Jim and I'm um, Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler, I say Jim like I know him. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Jim next door. Jim Carrey and Adam Sandler. I I think he was at a stage where he he did he'd done a couple of great films that were quite similar, but he didn't go say okay, I need to do something very different and then ruin it. He just stuck to what he knew. But he's also very capable of doing something different, so that's why I hope he doesn't retire. Uh, uncut. Je- oh no, sorry. Oh, sorry, Uncut <laughs> Gems. Yeah, no, I was yeah. about to say Uncut yeah, Gems was the best film I saw oh, yeah. in 2020. Well, yeah, in the 90s and 2000s, they did the same. But then you say Uncut Gems, that film was. It was unreal. Superb. Yeah, 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 yeah. It got robbed of an um, Oscar, I think. Yeah, yeah, he should have gotten a nomination. Yeah. Got robbed. And I also think Andrew Garfield got robbed this year. Oh, Tick Tick Boom, come on. <laughs> have you seen Tick Tick Boom? Uh, it was one of the best things ever. Like, I suppose, even from being around those people, you know, Art Set as well is a huge musical theatre mm-hmm. school as well as a drama school. Like, and um, you see the types of people like Jonathan Larson, and, you know, you're walking and you see, like, how big, you know, people are in their own physicality. And to see that translated to the camera with such freedom. I thought he should have won it by a mile. Mm. I, poor Will Smith. Look, I know he won it in the end. And yeah, we can talk about that in a bit. I know the poor mm. lad. I know. Oh boy. I mean, yeah. people are, people are quite torn about that, all right. But um, <sighs> I mean, I'm going to say I don't I, like. I don't think anybody should be hitting anybody on TV no, or anywhere else. All. God forbid. I mean, it's you can say you can understand why he did it, mm. but for it to be legit reason to do something like that, I don't know. Yeah, I'm seeing both sides. Yeah. You know, it's guy. I never met a man who let won't let people make jokes about his wife but he'll let other people sleep with his wife uh, yeah but I suppose as well for us it's hard too you know we're three white men as well like it's hard like, it's, 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 it's going to be a nerve though, though, isn't it sure. what? it's going to be a nerve though like isn't it you know like if if you bring it up in any form and again like this is not me justifying what he did like you know but yeah. like you know you know, you are going to touch a nerve if you're going to bring up his wife, like yeah, you know? and that's why people were quite confused as well because when the show when it originally happened, they had the shot of the two of them, and Will was laughing, and she quite got quite annoyed, and the camera cut away, and then oh, they cut I, back. I, to I, I have a theory about oh, that. Okay, and yes. I, I uh, maybe just I, reacting got, off protecting his wife. That must be just him being, you know, a I'm, husband. I've I've gone over it like Kevin Costner in the Sapruder footage, but uh, <laughs> like there, like I think he spot because he kind of laughs first, as you said, like. And she's not happy about it. And I, I think what was going through his head at the time was like, okay, I either have to go home and, you know, face her getting pissed off with me for laughing at it like a man, like, you know, take my punishment like a man, or I have to have the biggest overreaction of all time. Like, so he just yeah. marches up on stage and smacks the shit out of him. I like, mean, yeah. I literally thought it was Sorry, a skit. I, 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 yeah. we're not allowed to swear. Sorry. I no, you can yeah. swear away, one. I won't get oh, banned God, off don't YouTube. Don't tell me that. Do yeah. not tell me that. <laughs> Yeah, but I tried to cut down my swearing. But what's interesting is, though... It's You're like, from Kerry, you should be swearing all the time. I know, yeah. I know, yeah. But being offended nowadays makes you right. I think that's a really weird thing that we see. Like, we see a lot of people, like, oh my God, I can't believe he said that about his wife. I just... This whole offence culture, I think a lot, like, if you look at this, I suppose we're going into something mad now, like, whoa, culture and offence culture. Right. This is not written down, yes, boys. true, we'll go back to the script, but... Um, Bang, that's gone. Yeah, I know, Jesus. <laughs> Tell me what you really think. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I just, I don't know, I find it puzzling, really. He's doing his job, I get it, and I know that he's felt like he's been demasculated by Hollywood and stuff like that. Hmm. It's a different pressure. I can, I can definitely understand that there's pressures there and things to perform and to be seen a certain way and to not be seen... I don't know, maybe as weak or whatever the perception of him could have been in that room. Um, but I think it's frightening. It's frightening that he got a two-minute standing ovation after assaulting a man yeah. on stage. Like, look, I don't, I don't want to damn anyone. I'm not here to damn Will Smith either. Like, do you know, not that he cares what I'm saying. But I, I think it's really important that with second chances. Joaquin said that in his Golden Globe speech. Remember, he was talking about second chances and he's only here, a product of second chances. I think it's very important that he does yeah. get a second chance. Because look, yeah, it's fair. It's a snap reaction. He slapped someone in the face. It wasn't great. Banned from the Oscars for 10 years. He should take his penance and that should be it. I think, yeah, because obviously it's very easy for us to sit here and say, oh, he should have done this and that. We're not involved in that Hollywood scene, as you say, and it can be a dodgy place. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I'm actually that what Whacking Phoenix, the, was, the, was it the Golden Globes he was saying? Where yeah, he's, he's or in a room. the Oscar, yeah. He was in, he said he literally pointed out the fact that he's in a room full of people who gave him a second chance. Mm-hmm. And I did like I wouldn't even. Like, Wacky Phoenix is probably so dedicated to his art that he probably would maybe annoy people on set, and he yeah. would get the point. You've seen some outtakes of Joker where maybe there was like a one of the DOPs was just annoying him, and he actually lashed out at him in yeah. Joker character. Uh, so small things like that. And he has good intentions. He wants to be as good as he can, but you can get backlashes, or you can maybe take people out on the process in the way that you don't mean to. So yeah. when you say Will Smith shouldn't have done it, I I don't think he should have done it, but I can also totally see why he did it. Yeah. Can, can I also just say like. Jokes were so bad. This and like that that included because like it's it's, it's like a Chris Rock is usually Chris Rock made a joke about her several years ago where it was like uh, you know she boycotted 
the Oscars, you know, during the Oscars. So why uh, fiasco? Like, but uh, uh, he was like, Jada oh, yes, Pinkett yes. Smith uh, boycotting the Oscars is like me boycott- boycotting the uh, boycotting Rihanna's uh, panties. Like, oh yeah, uh, I wasn't invited. He, he was a lot funnier <laughs> and had actual comic timing, by the way. So like, no, no, that 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 was actually funnier. And it's like, uh, and then he's making like, oh, looking forward to G.I. Jane 2. And it's like, really? A Ridley Scott movie from the late 90s? Like that, that he nobody literally, remembers? He said that after he made the joke. It was a G.I. Jane joke. It wasn't yeah, even yeah, that yeah, deep, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, it was so not worth it. <laughs> no, it was yeah, crazy. It was some so small inkling. Yeah. Um, but I see, yeah, it, it, it was weird just seeing him react to laughing and then the camera turns and then he's just so switched. He must have just seen his wife. Yeah, and I think it's an interesting so, thing as well. I think it speaks to the totally mentality of like, Hollywood as well or even like like obviously look we're in Cork I suppose in Corkwood whatever you want to call that like Mm -hmm. oh yeah geez, that doesn't really stick does it Corkwood 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 sounds a bit that sounds a bit sus as well uh, School of Music is now renaming itself as Corkwood Corkwood. exactly I know you're welcome School of Music by Cormac Duvall yeah I'll take the paycheck next week okay jeez oh my god (laughs) you think you're being serious I know yeah Yeah, imagine (laughs) Corkwood yeah I know imagine but like you know it always speaks to the mentality because I think there's a lot of self doubt in this whole thing and I suppose I don't know Mike if you've ever had that like I think for me like I'm always someone who believes in myself to the max but you know you can't help sometimes comparing yourself to other people or you look at someone in their 20s in America getting this TV show and you're like wow that should be me I should be further ahead but I think um, someone said this thing to me recently a director came into us Matt Harrison he's a brilliant director and he said to us comparison is the thief of joy thief thief Jesus I'd get killed for my THs but it's really powerful because if you think about that like you're going to lose all the joy when you're comparing yourself to others. And really, for me, the main thing in a room when I'm rehearsing or doing anything is to have that joy yeah. and to keep it going. Like you got to remember as well, like not every it's you're like a football player as well. We're not. We're human. Things are going to go well. Things aren't going to go well. I had a hard time. Being a United that. fan, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it is. Oh, God almighty. I mean, we're shocking. I like. shouldn't have said that. It's on camera. No people know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're going to get some cruel comments next. Great. Yeah, but it's tough, though. You know, sometimes you do a performance or you might do a scene or you and you're really not getting the essence of the character. Or maybe things are there and you're feeling things. You're really struggling to connect. And you're thinking to yourself, like, why can't I do this? I could do this before. But I think it's just acceptance as well. Like, I think that's a big, big thing. And yeah. realise that you have the power to change these things. I feel when you still have that joy... That's where the possibilities are. That's when you can soften and just really reveal yourself to the person across the way. I think. I think though, it's good to recognize, as like because I, I've been given scripts before, where it was just like you know, I, I, I found them from my own perspective. I found them incomprehensible, and I was mm. just like, I don't know what I can bring to this character. Like you know, and then I'd see it actually released, and uh, it turned out to be a pretty decent short. And I'm watching the person perform, and I'm like. Yeah, they knew what to bring to that role. Okay. I didn't know what to bring. Fair play to them. Like, yeah, you know, respect it out of it, yeah. Do you know, it's, it, there's, yeah, there, there's no shame in recognising your strengths and your weaknesses. True. You know? Oh, yeah. Cause we, I mean, you, you, we literally did that. We had to do um, a performance platform in Actors Vision recently where everybody Class. was given a musician, an iconic musician from all time, I suppose. We're all different from different years uh, where we had to perform a song that they, I would do a five minute improv interview and then perform a song on camera. It was, ad- it was ad-libs, we weren't actually singing, but we were performing as them. We were sat in a room, 15 of us, and everybody in that room, we all got to see our performances live. Everybody in that room, nobody was looking at anyone else's thinking that was bad. You just appreciate that there's little things in every single performance that if even if someone doesn't like their performance and they think, oh, it was crap, there's little moments with the faces and maybe the kind of gestures that they make that were all spot on from so many people. Just learning to appreciate that all of that, the amount of work that went into just small little things, noticing those and being able to replicate it. As you say, appreciating and just knowing that, okay, that was amazing. I love the energy in there. It's all people just supporting each other, trying to get as good as they can. Now, before we finish up, we have, I think it's six minutes. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. Time flies. By, I know, I doesn't you. it? Like, I feel like I've been here a bit. You, t- you, touched, you, touched, on about being, oh, you touched on about being um, about Hollywood and stuff and you feel like you have to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I will be. I suppose it's no, no, because this is what yeah, I mean. Sorry, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. In ten years' time, yeah. If you guys want to put yourself somewhere, are you guys happy with where you are and what you're working on? Maybe in ten years' time, you want to see a bit of progression, or are you kind of happy to see let the wind blow the way it is? Where do you want to be in maybe ten years' time? Well, like the dream would be Hollywood, but like I mean, like realistically, like you know, I would just like to be getting steady work and acting like you know yeah okay so yeah uh, th- and, and again like you know, people are like oh have you made Hollywood yes and it's like that would be great and it's like uh, I remember I remember years ago 
my neighbor was like, uh, oh, maybe you'll end up in Fair City. And I was like, oh, I will, yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, I love a gig in Fair City like I mean, that. Yeah. That would be a steady paycheck because, like, at the end of the day, it's like uh, you do stuff like that and that would pay the bills, like, you know, and stuff. And then it's like, okay, I can go out and produce a short or something or I can go out and do my own thing. Yeah, you know? it actually frees you up to do your own thing as well. Yeah, it's yeah like actually, it. A Cork actor, Aidan O'Callaghan, got cast in EastEnders recently. Oh, wow. I actually did a, I did a voice Aiden. course with him um, in lockdown and I saw him the other day. So, yeah, congrats, Aidan. You're probably not watching, but congrats, anyway. Yeah, it's great. Well done. Um, but yeah, you call me, You mentioned the ten years one specifically to me. What yeah. are you? What are you aiming um, for? What's your past? Past white? Past? Okay, uh, cool. Past youth? No. Past you? Oh my god, youth. We'll, What's we'll, happening? Will you touch on that? Do you want to touch on youth? Yeah, why not? Myself and David. Jeez, wait. Do you, you go by David or do you go by Dahi? I'm trying to think. Whichever floats your boat, Dave oh, Dahi cool. or David. Um, uh, we should we go Dahi? Why not? Bit of the Guelga. Go go yeah, but, um, Cormac Duval and Dahi. Lovely. Cormac, yeah, do you know? I mean, look at it. Look Stick at us go, lads. If there's, I think I was even Dahi back then. I think he. I was credited in the film as Dahi. I think. Yeah, we did the short film anyway. I think, when did I get the script? I got the script. Somebody dropped out as the actor in it anyway. And oh, I got you the got script. It, you got it after me. Bit, yeah, about two days before the thing. Um, So, you know, you do your best with it. It was a definite learning curve because as well, up until that point, I had no formal camera training. All the training I had done was on stage. I was very much a stage actor. And... um. Yeah, I suppose that's where we met. I think, looking back in it now, I watched it recently enough, to be honest with you, oh, it wasn't the best watch for myself. I was cringing, like, I'm just overdoing it. You know, when an actor smells of trying too hard, that's what <laughs> I was doing, like. Yeah. I mean, you're, but you're only trying hard because you care, so... Suppose, I suppose, double-edged and sword, film, isn't it? And your first film is never going to be your best one. No, never. Well, like, Unless like, you're Maggie Gyllenhaal. If, if you look at your first film... <laughs> yeah. if, if you look at your first film years after making it and go, like, that's perfect... You're in the wrong. Yeah, yeah, of course. You're in Delusion, the wrong like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. That's nice to look back on and start from your roots because that's the first time we met as well, and we had one scene. Do you know what? No, doing that scene, I remember that was probably in terms of production value, like the the smoke and the room and everything. Good, that yeah. was actually worked out pretty cool. I actually enjoyed making that. Obviously, because I had one scene, you had the rest of the film to make, so it's easier for me to kind yeah, of relax no, and say, great. okay, I got this one scene, I can nail it, and then go home. And I did that. But um, going back to it though, the ten year plan. Just. Um, Look, I know this sounds a bit mad, but I have to speak my truth, really, when it comes to this. You look at Jim Carrey, you look at people give, writing themselves checks and stuff, and I always just think, yeah. why not me? Like, 10 years' time, look, I really know where I'm going. I see the people who've paved the way before me, the Aidan Gillens, the Killian Murphys, you know, people like that. I think I'm very aware that, that my career can go in one of two ways, really. I'm either going to go down the Chris O'Dowd, Pat Short, Peter Campy, and that kind of route, or I, and to be honest with you, I'm leaning towards it heavily. I think it's the stuff I'm better at is more the Killian Murphy, Mo Dunford. Because you look exactly Aiden like Gillen. Killian Murphy. Oh, no, I do not. I do. Uh, a little bit, I suppose. Thank you. I think it's the Yeah, I mean, I'm going to take it. Yeah, I, mean, I take yeah, it. I do. Yeah. So I do not look like him at all. Yeah, but that's the plan. And then I think, no, and not that I think, because I never say I think. And I, I, I hate saying this on a podcast because I feel it sounds a little bit conceited, but it's my truth. I will, I will. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, really, when this stuff's going to happen. Um, because I just know what I am. I think Let's my see. biggest strength as a person is I don't pretend to be something I'm not. Like, I'm a little bit weird, I'm a little bit silly. Just go when with I, it. When I go down, exactly, I'm quite spontaneous. But mm. when it comes to it, like, no, I'm professional, I do the work and I bring a nice energy and I'm quite kind. Like, Big that, energy. Th- I don't, yeah. Big energy. I don't know if that makes me sound like an absolute... Don't worry, you'll twat, watch this like, back and you like... I hope have I sound plaque. nice saying that, but... It'll yeah. be a screenshot from this episode and above it, it's just like, I will. But every time I we display. text back and forth throughout the year, yeah, you bro. always say to me and we end every conversation, see you at the top. It's the same for you. I know where, where we're going. Like, to be fair, five years time, I'd like to be nominated for an IFTA. That's the big plan. Okay, yeah. I think, um, I think it's very achievable as well. I know it's difficult, difficult to say, but I think um, I have a few ideas, a few stuff I've written. I'm trying to do... Uh, not to jump the gun really and tell you too much, but I've and it was short that I'm trying to do after drama school, Osquelga, and then potentially turn that into a feature. It, who knows? But in between then, what work I get, who I sign with, all these different things are up in the air. But um, all the attentions are good though. Yeah, no, of course we got to, and of course as Cork people as well, let's put Cork on the map. I know Kerry might, nah, but um, now, now my ambition, yourself. now my ambition is to one day go like be sitting down watching the iftas and go, I did a podcast. I guess right. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mike, you'll be in the film too. Sure. The three of us be on the red carpet. The three of us be on there. Irish, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, I know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, get the grammar book out. No, boys, we'll be there. Now, when I told you the time flies, yeah. was a line. I know. I know. Out, unfortunately, with 56. Um, before we finish up though, Dog Girl in the City. Yes. It's coming out. It's coming out soon. Very soon. Very I won't soon. give a definite date, but uh, we're more or less uh, so, done with the editing. For uh, those who don't know, yeah, basically Dogger was a radio play written by Mike. He cast me and a bunch of brilliant other actors in it. It sounds amazing from what I hear. 
We had a brilliant time recording it. It's such a fantastic story. A great uh, sci-fi uh, comedy. Sci-fi comedy. You, you put a lot. You put fantasy. four or five tags on it in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but we recorded over the over a couple of probably just before Christmas. Uh, it's coming out next week on or not next week. Coming out soon. Maybe on, next week. Maybe we'll next see, week. We'll see, we'll you said next week to me, so that's what I was yeah, going to bank yeah, on. Ish. I, I won't say anything official yet. Okay, like, no either next week or the week after. We'll but see I'll keep you updated on the podcast page for that radio play. Um, a brilliant cast, brilliant writer, brilliant production. Brilliant music and a great composer with Shane as well. The great, the sound oh, is fantastic. Uh, Shane, who's actually work on it. stepping He's down, he won't be doing the. Is it you? This is the pilot. So yeah, this, this is the pilot. Continuing. So we're basically going to put the pilot out there and see what people think. Like yeah. you know, if they want more, like you know, like I've started writing a second episode. Yeah, so you like, said yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll so yeah, see how it goes. It's been yeah. released soon. I'll keep update on that. But for now, boys, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Amazon. Thanks for coming on, boys. Great stories, great information. Uh, again, before I go away, Sullivan's, may hold up the beers, boys. Yes, Don't yes, drink them, though, because... Thank you so much. Uh, thanks again, boys, for a sponsorship. Uh, we can't drink them because they're out of date. Can you... Oh, there's another camera. Yeah, they look <laughs> lovely, Sullivan's, we don't have bo- We don't have bottle openers either, so we'll just bang. I know, yeah, maybe with the teeth. If you want. Yeah, will I? Do you want to cut the finished episode before he does that so I don't get blood on the yeah, screen? Yeah, yeah, let's not do that. But <laughs> yeah, no, Dave, thanks for having us on. No worries, boys. Cheers, thanks again, boys, for coming on. Cheers, boys. Later.